to another episode of Worst First. I am here with Mr. Jamie Kennedy, and I'm so excited to have you here. How are you? <laughs> Hello from the other side. I miss you so much. I got this plastic divider because I just feel like I'm I'm so paranoid. I mean, I get tested a lot because he's yeah. always doing stuff, but you know, if I can't get tested or if I'm afraid people haven't been tested, even though they tell me, yeah, you know, and then it's like people have been like, I'm not around anyone. It's like the same thing as people being like, I've only had three sexual partners. You like times it by 30. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. My mouth just touched this mic. Who was the last person you had? I sanitized it. How do you sanitize this part? I wiped, I wiped it down with the antibacterial stuff. I wiped okay. the whole thing down. Don't worry. I'm like <laughs> this. Fuck. Do you know anybody with it? Um, by the way, I'm just like, cause I got, I'm starting my pod and I love everyone. Everyone has to have this. this yeah. The road cat. Do you use yeah, one? Yeah. Okay. Um, do I know anybody that has it? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people. You do? Yeah. How bad are they doing? Uh, all stages. There's people. Um, uh, fortunately, I don't know anyone who's passed. Oh, thank the Lord. Um, I did know some people that were in the hospital that got out. Uh, I don't know anybody that was on a vent. How long were they in the hospital for? Oh, uh, week. Um, I know that, um, I know a couple people, a club owner that, uh, just, she had it. Her daughter had it. She beat it. Uh, I know other comics that have had it. They end up telling you after like mid conversation, you're like, you, um, <laughs> you're like back up worst first. That's <laughs> one of the worst first, but, uh, you're like 30 minute conversation. They've already had like 30 spit. Yeah, in your mouth. And I'm like, then they're like, I beat it. I'm like, what the, f so I had, I had that, but I've had more people have had it. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, just for the record, I've never been tested. Never. No. Wow, great to know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I just turn off the button. No, you should kick me out. I here's the thing is I just interviewed a nurse mm -hmm. at last night. I had a two hour conversation. Mm -hmm. And um there's a lot of stuff. There's the PCR tests, you know what those are? No. PCR tests, I don't know exactly what it stands for, but PCR are the tests that basically says that you have it. Right? But the thing is, there's many, many layers to this feathered bird and basically the sensitivity they say one of the things is it's so sensitive that like you may have it which we all have little traces of a lot of stuff in our body but it doesn't mean it's bad and the pcr test might pick it up oh you have it also there's a lot of people that didn't have it that got positives you've been how seeing does this? that happen though that's the question oh, right boy and so the other thing is there's a lot of people I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I talked with the nurse and the nurse basically said this guy tested four times. Mm -hmm. He did not have it. Okay. They said, this is crazy. This guy says every symptom of it. They brought him to the hospital. They went down, they did something called a deep opera, operoscopic in his nose, in his lung. They scraped his lung. They then tested that. And then they found it was in there. So what it is is that like. That is fucking terrifying. I know. So what it is is like, does he have it? Is that the part that comes out? Is it, is it. So yes. So I think the tests are pretty much if F. I haven't been sick in a year, knock on wood. I think yeah. I had it in maybe December before it was supposed to be here. Right. But I was traveling. I played three different continents in the summer. So I thought maybe it could have been there early. Who knows? How sick were you? Sick, sick? Sick as fuck. Uh, like you I thought you were dying. Yeah, I did a show in Saudi Arabia. I did a show in, I know, I did a show in, I did Italy, mm -hmm. then I was in France, and then I did Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I would say the most probably cross pollination is Hawaii. Right. And so, and then that was all before Thanksgiving. And then I came back and I got sick in early December and I was just dead for two days. And then, boom, I was amazing. And you I, just had two days of feeling like shit? Two days of horrificness. Oh, Vomiting, God. diarrhea. Ooh, yucky. Can't sleep because you're so hot. Like cold press, cold press, cold press. Like, but I didn't have any breathing issues. Okay. Long, short. Did you have a cough? Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but I did feel terrible. And knock on one, I don't know if I had it or not. Because it wasn't supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. I haven't been sick since. Thank so the Lord. Whatever happened, maybe it made me stronger. I have no fucking idea. I don't even know if it was it. My doctor is like, listen, if you have no symptoms, there's no reason to get tested. This is my doctor. This is what mm -hmm. the doctor told me. He's mm -hmm. like, why get tested if you feel good? Right. 
That's kind of weird. Keep- I see all these people online. They're like getting at home tests. I'm like, oh, are you not feeling good? They're like, no, I just want to see if I have it. I'm like. Bethany, I'm pretty sure if you didn't like Bethany, if you it's had always it, a Bethany. It's always fucking Bethany. So the the nurse told me that also the rapid tests aren't really that reliable. Great, those ones where they come to your house and tell yeah, you in three he minutes. Says, he says that's bullshit. Oh, he says boy. the only ones are the deep, 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 deep uncomfortable swabs. The ones in the nose that yeah. go really far up. Yeah, mm, but again, right. he's just a nurse, but he's in the front lines right now. He's been in the COVID unit for eight months. Has he gotten it or no? No, and that's okay. another whole thing. He's like. Because he hasn't gotten and he thought he should have gotten it a hundred times. And but by the way, this is great because he says it's most, he thinks it's mostly spittles. It's spittles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what I heard. That's why I got this. So it's like, as long as someone's not coughing yeah, or like, you know, the particles, like wash your hands, guys, wear a mask, like, yeah. you know, whatever. But Has anyone used this before 24 hours ago? No, okay, good. no, not for four usually days. after that. You're pretty good. You said not for four days. The last um, person on it, was- and I and I also sanitize everything. I'm actually I've been a kind of a clean freak before this whole pandemic. Like I'm very OCD, where I have to wash everything all the time and be really clean. So like this kind of has our. Already- I, I know I got the amazing, beautiful, clean house. Thank you. Yeah, I do yes. it all myself. No, <laughs> we don't even have a maid. I just do it myself. Um, but yeah, no. What did he say about the vaccine? Like, I want to know. Are you gonna get it? What do you think? Like. What is your perception? Are you going to get the vaccine? No? You an anti-vaxxer? No. You don't even have the measles vaccine? <laughs> no, I'm not an anti you don't even have- I'm not an anti-vaxxer at all, but like, <laughs> well, I mean, it's scary to say what you can say because then they speak track and you don't say what your opinions are. But look. You're allowed to have an opinion. <sighs> Who cares what anyone says? It's getting to the point where you can't. <laughs> I know. Um, they cancel you over. <laughs> Jamie Kennedy's encouraging people not to get vaccinated. Listen, I am very yeah. Skeptical. I'm not, I'm not trying to go and get some people are, but some I mean, people are. Yeah, a lot of people. some. Come on, yeah, like brittles. The, you know what's so funny is that did brittles, you see what I did? You, my did my you, mom used to call me brittles. That's so weird, mommy. <laughs> oh, no one's ever called always, you. Just my mom. Brits. Oh my god, that's the first <laughs> thing I think of. Brittles. It's like skittles. <laughs> yes, of I come out with my own candy, brittles or brizzles. Um, Brizzles like Twizzlers, but like just not as good. Yeah, <laughs> like the really shitty kind made in China. Oh. Brizzles. Brizzles, hey guys, buy my new Brizzles merch. Hey, no, but did you? I mean, go on my Instagram. Did you see what I posted about the Australian thing? No, I have to look at it. All right, so in Australia, oh shit, they were working on the vax. Oh my god, you can't even say that. I want to get the trouble. vax. You have to. Say, they were working on the, and basically they were. They got a bunch of people. Yeah. And they did something and they put a protein in it. And the protein mimicked a protein from HIV. So basically the body thought it had HIV. Oh my God. And so half of the test group came back as HIV positive. Now everyone in Australia. (laughs) So they go in. I just kill myself. I'm like, wow. And they said, listen, it's a false positive. You're fine. So they had to keep going back until they kept negative. What the fuck? And so they said, well, it was way we, yeah. So I'm not just, there's a lot of talk. I know. There's a lot of rabbit holes to go down to. I'm not dying to get it. And then there's like four people that got Bell's palsy from it. Yeah. But out of like 400,000. But still, can you imagine that we're the one person (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I just don't. I, I listen. My fine doctor is like, why get tested if you don't have it? Why get the vaccine if you feel good? Yeah, but listen, that's a whole other ball of wax. I don't I'm think dead. we're even gonna be able to get it because we only ordered a certain amount, and I I heard it goes to the, like the most dire groups, like the people on the front lines and the old people first, and then it trickles down to other people. Yeah, but what happens when they make you? Get, get it. it because you want to travel and then you don't have it. Yeah, that's what that's got to, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, they're gonna be like, you need we need to see your your fucking what's that scar that people used to get when that vaccine that they would get that it would give them like oh. an indent. What's that? Oh thing yeah, called? what was that for? Immunizations or something. Yeah, they would have like a little a dent. You know how you know like people in another country have that little inoculation. Mark on their, yeah, but if you don't have the mark of the <laughs> yeah. You don't have the mark of the beast. You cannot go to Guatemala. You cannot go to Costa Rica. You cannot go anywhere. I know. It's kind of crazy. I go mean, to your Oculus. I get my fucking, I get my my flu vaccine every year. You don't Whoa. get that? Wow. I get that every year. That's helped me a lot, actually. They actually say one of two things. There's theories about it that people either who have the flu vaccine could get the Rona 
or they really don't get their own. It's one or the other. I don't know. Yeah, because I get it every year. You know, to be completely honest, and I'm probably going to like kick myself in the face after saying this, but like I've only gotten really, really sick once in my life in 2015. And it was like I caught, I think like I, I had like a pneumonia and it was so gnarly. How old are you? I was probably like 28, but I was also on a fuck ton of Adderall. I wasn't eating. I was like drinking tons of diet soda. I was like 90 pounds. I was kind of a mess. And so like I rightfully so got very ill. And then right after that, like I kicked Adderall. I kicked like all this shit. And then I was like been like sober since. Are you sober sober? Mm-hmm. Like nothing? Nothing. Yeah. And how are you sober? Uh I haven't drank in over two and a half years and I don't really do many I don't really do anything, but I do do some C B D and I do C B D. Okay, yeah. so I didn't know like that counted. I don't know. Sometimes some AA people will be like, Oh yeah, C B D is you know, whatever. But I, I have anxiety, so I take C B D for anxiety. Yeah, I think what it do works. you take it for? I just helps me sleep. Okay, like nighttime CBD. Yeah, and I rub it on my elbows and it it's helps. so nice. Yeah, I I'm love not, CBD. And I'm not sober. I'm just I didn't like the way alcohol was making me look and feel. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, I'll stop. But yeah, I don't want to drink right now. Yeah, drinking is not rad. I mean, like it's like you think Bitter you're betties. gonna have so fun, have so much fun, and like maybe you do for like an hour, and then you get really depressed, and you're like, oh, at least my experience. Yeah, and you're I, like, oh, now it's really sad. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, and I'm fat and hungry. Like, you're like, this yeah. is nothing. There's nothing positive of this. And I made an ass of myself for an hour before this, you know? It's kind of weird. I know. It's, you're right. And I've, it's, I've done it. Yeah, exactly. I've like, it's done like it. you get kind of tired. You're like, okay. Yeah. You know, and it's like, there's other ways you can relax. Yeah. People I've heard, they hook up. Mm -hmm. People hook up. Yeah. And then my friend hooked up with a girl, and he's like, yo, she was cute. And I'm like, yo. Bro, you're going to get so, it's so scary out there. I'm like, was she ventilator cute? Like, is that the one you want to go out on? Like, <gasps> no, she's hot. She'll literally take your breath away. She's. <laughs> was she ventilator cute? Well, it's just, That's <laughs> fucked up. That's funny, though. It's just. It's true. Yeah. It's, is it worth it, dude? Is why it is this weird? It? But I don't know. People are like fucking mad smashing. Are you on Raya? No, I was on that. What did you think of that? That's how I met um, Tommy. Did you? Are you? Fucking kidding me. I could totally see how that. I fucking the, met him on Raya. That makes total sense. Where the fuck else would I meet Tommy Lee? Literally. Uh, where would I Chipotle, meet him? Chipotle. Dead. Maxim Party. No, he doesn't go to that um, stuff. Maxim Party. Rainbow Room. He doesn't go there. It's not 1986. I, but they have great chicken soup. I do love their, um, I do love their food. Boa. There's a lot of wherever. If Tommy goes out, you could run into him. He doesn't really go out. No, oh, I'm So that's that. how I ended up meeting him. But wait, hold on. Let's go back. There's yeah. a lot of topics and you're on Adderall without it. But <laughs> I'm not here, on Adderall anymore. That's the scary part. <laughs> here's the thing. I, I'm so glad you brought Raya. Okay. First of all, I don't think I've ever hooked up from an app. Ever? Not even you didn't go on any dates with anybody from Raya? No. First really? Of all, not one date? Not people weren't like, I'm a huge did, Scream fan. I want to meet you. Did you hear? Why can't it be because I like my hat? I really like your um, hat. Here's the deal. It's because first of all, who has the fucking time? Are you that busy? A date. Yes. I have so much time. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, fucking it's not if you don't if when you get the job, it's not that you're get busy when you get the job. It's Getting the job is making you busy, right? Right. So, first of all, I, I, the only app I've ever hooked on is Instagram. Oh, you, it, so Instagram's been like your dating and app. And MySpace. No, but just, you know, people DM you. Yeah. And then, they'll be like, or they come to a show or whatever, or Twitter, they retweet you and people yeah. flirt and all that stuff. But never an app. Uh to, I was on Tinder like when it first came out. My boys like you got to try this, and then they did a thing, and they mentioned three people that were on it. They mentioned in in this like press release about like famous was, people. Well, they had they said Ashton Kutcher, but I don't know if he was investing. Lindsay Lohan and me, and the whole thing was like I made like a fake account and like didn't know if people knew it was me, and they knew it was me, so. I, I ended that shit. Oh, they didn't even ask you to put this article out? No. They just fucking put you on blast. I, I was kind of, I was I was honored, but I was like, no, I want to be on the deal. And then yeah. I never did any other shit, mm -hmm. but then 
Raya, yeah. I think, was started by my buddy. Explain what Raya is for and, people that don't and I'll, know. And I'll tell you my yeah. beef. I'll, I'll tell you, it's great. It's so funny that you just said this and that it makes sense. And by the way, when I talk, I like to get through everything, so I apologize. Yeah. And then, you know, and then we go on to the next one. But okay. you can shut me up. But okay, Raya is big. I'll tell you exactly what my beef is with it. So great about this. Raya is the place for, and she would be different. Okay. It's the place where, no, I gave you the answer before the question. It's the place where, do you, it's like supposed to be the select place. Yeah. Where dudes in LA can meet uh, women of, of their ilk, yeah. if you will. How can I say it? Caliber. It's, it's less gen pop. Yeah. But it's really not. Here's what they couch it as. They couch it as, oh, this girl has X amount of flowers and she's an influencer or blah, blah, blah. And there's also famous women, but it's more like the famous yeah. people, yeah. more men, some women. And then they get to meet people that are like unknown, but you can meet both mm -hmm. that are, you know, it's in the social media influencing game. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. And yeah. so here's my fuck. I went on that. And I did get a lot of love. Well, I, I was back and forth. I had some convos. But first of all, it's too much fucking time. <laughs> and second of all, I'm going to tell you why. And I, and I respect everybody who created it. And I think you're doing great. And, you know, shut up. But a lot of the women on there really don't get it. Okay. What do you mean by that? And that's why I said you're one of the rares. Oh, thanks. Um, basically it's like, here I am, I'm hiring Kuchar, and I got this hat from Coachella, and I'm trying to do something, and it's inspirational, but then at the end, I'm really wet, I can show you I'm crazy too, but I'm a 9.5, like, oh girl, God. when those looks drop... That's it. Your person, you're done. Like yeah. the women on that fucking app have Zippo personality. personality. Yeah. They've got no fucking, they, it's like, they can't keep the fuck up. Yeah. They're like, hi. you're like, they're, hi, how are you? But I'm good. Like, how are you? Uh, and they're like, fucking young's out here, thong here. Well, I'm working on a screenplay <laughs> and I'm writing a novel. Oh Girl. my God. They spell novel wrong. You're like, yeah, oh. no, it's like. That's my problem. Great looking yeah. women, but probably I'm the vibe I got was like, yeah, it's, I I feel you on mummified. That. And I I'm, heard that from it, a lot of people. Yeah, and I was like, I never. I was like, where's the fun? Yeah, where's the fun? So I was like, nada. And I, I think that whole way you can do it, but it's not natural. Like, whatever happened is going to Trader Joe's and someone bumping into your card, or do you do that? Do you bump into hot chicks? <laughs> Sorry. You fucking fuck. <laughs> you, fuck. you ever no, you ever go on the 101 and like <laughs> ram a girl's car and go, sorry, pull over. No, you can't. That's a joke. Oh my it's god. It's a joke. These are Can you imagine so desperate to meet a hot girl? People I've heard them done. And then she takes her mask off and her nose is like, fuck. You're like, fuck, now I gotta pay for her car and I'm not even getting anything. But no, I think for you meet you meet people naturally. That's been most of my life. I and, never and, met people naturally, though. Well, I'm going to ask you, but I'm, I, I've i been, you know, doing well in yeah. this business since I'm about 23-ish. So my life has been weird. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, but to me, it's been normal. But yeah. you wonder why guys are 50 and still dress like they're 16 and like, you know. And so it's like, because we stopped having to worry at 23 or 18. And it's like been like that. So it's been like, Fun time, you, mm -hmm. you know, they're, oh, another state, another country, you know, so, and it's been pretty, so that's been my thing. And I don't even go like, you know, I usually let it happen. Let it happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, I totally get it. I, I don't go for it. I think that's so rad that you've been able to have that. Like, I feel like, yeah, I guess before social media, I did have boyfriends, but it was like, 
I don't know. Like, I feel like since social media, I've been able to meet so many more people that I, f- I actually fit with much better than like me just being like, oh, I'm at the studio at a party and he's kind of cool. And like, we kind of get along and like, he's cool. I end up dating him for way too long. He's not even that cool, but it's like the thing that you, I felt like I barely ever met people. So when I did meet someone, it was like, even if they weren't that great, I would kind of be like, oh, well, I could fucking date this guy. Cause like, I never met people. Cause I was like, I don't know. I just never really met people. But were you? What, did you grow up in Los Angeles? No, but I moved here at seventeen. You moved here at seventeen. Yeah. To be an actress, mm-hmm. singer, comedian. Okay. Yeah. So were you going to parties? Yeah. And so you would see, you would go to the hills. Yeah. You go to a club, yeah. like you know, nice guys or something, and then yeah. afterwards you go to the after party. Yeah. So that's where you would meet people. But I never got hit on ever. Were you ever? Were you flirty? I think I was, but I was. I'm also really goofy. And I think guys are like, uh, about goofy girls. Were you, I'm going to be blunt with him. Were you annoying? I'm a little annoying. Because you yeah. don't seem annoying. I'm annoying. <laughs> I'm really were you annoying. like, here's, here's what it is. And let's go back to Raya. Were you like wearing like a bikini top trying to do a Christopher Walken impression? I've never been like that. Like, because that's annoying. Pick your lane. <laughs> no, I was actually like, I'm actually really shy when I would go to parties. And then when someone started talking to me, because I have like social anxiety, mm-hmm. I start to just be, be, try to be like, make them really comfortable at my own expense. You know what I mean? So like, I try to like control it and like ask all the questions and be like, so tell me more about yourself. Like, and I feel like guys don't really like that because it's like the guys, like the dominance of them being like, let me ask you about yourself. And I'm like, well, tell me about where you grew up. And I'm like, I'm kind of taking the reins. You know what I mean? Yeah, but did you talk, did you talk too much where it's just the sexual tension went away? I feel like I talk a lot and I did then too, because like I get nervous and like, I've always been super uncomfortable in, I always get used, unless like someone like you where I'm like kind of cozy and I'm like, oh, he's like a comedian. I get it. You know what I mean? Like it just- I make her zero nervous. It makes me, no, no, no. But it's like, it just depends. Like, especially because of like now I'm 34. I'm not, you know, 17 anymore. And I've learned how to deal with this. But I think back then I was, I'm just always, I'm always so cautious of other people's feelings that like, I don't ever want anyone else to feel uncomfortable. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make myself feel uncomfortable. So you don't feel uncomfortable. And so I'll do all like, you know, if there's like a lull or if there's like an awkward silence, like I'm going to fill it so that you don't feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? You are, yeah, you're an empath. A total empath. Which is, I I believe I am too. It's a painful existence. It's really hard. Yeah. Because you absorb everyone's shit. Yeah, and you obsess. Ugh. How do you deal with it? It's uh, painful. Um, I believe I am. I believe that's a yeah. real thing, and I believe you are. Yeah. And people say they are, but it's like unless you feel it, you'll yeah. understand. But yeah. like right away, we're already connecting like that. So I'll tell yeah. you what. It's, it's better actually since the Rona because – it's setting our priorities of like what's really fucking important. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that I just try to put my best foot forward, try to make people feel good. And then if there's weirdness there, which I usually there's not, Mm -hmm. I end it, but I try not to do anything odd. And I always check it like, okay, was that okay? Was that okay? And then I put it away, Mm -hmm. but I have to fucking do that. I have to do because we live in such a, what is the word? A fucking bitch bag society where I grew up in Philly. Where I you, grew up in Philly. What the fuck? Where? Where did you grow up? Upper, yeah, I didn't grow up in the city. I grew up in Upper Bucks County, like outside. Upper Darby. Stop. Oh my God. Where would you live? That's fucking weird, dude. I did not know that. <laughs> this is getting, this, this is and like we both Raya. Have a, we both have emotional problems. We're yes. like, yes. Why be with something in the water in Philly? Right. <laughs> Just not enough like calcium or something. We're all, I feel bad for everyone and myself. I kind of believe that. But I grew up in Philly. <laughs> That's crazy. And so, yeah. so you know what you, somebody says, fuck you, oh, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Give the finger somebody in traffic. Yeah. Whatever. You can say some shit. How's that shit? It makes you look fat. Whatever. And you just say shit. No one would care. Yeah. When I got to LA in the late 80s, Anything I said, I put my arm on somebody's shoulder, get the fuck off me, flip some off on the freeway, fucking throw something at my car. Like people took things yeah. so sensitive. And now where we're at, 
and everyone gets butt hurt so fucking easy. And we're in the business of Hollywood where it's like, well, you shouldn't have said that to that fucking casting associate sister's friend because <laughs> now she can fight. And so it's like, so you just, okay, how are you? Like all sarcasm has to like stay within your fucking circle. So yeah. So you just can't have any personality. Yeah. You have to kind of like deal with your circle, I guess, but it's I annoying. Don't know. It is. It's really frustrating. It's actually so hard to like, especially because so many people online write to you. I don't know if they do this to you, but they do to me because I'm always talking about mental health and stuff. And oh. so many people write to in, me. Wait, in a bikini. Always. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's hey what Raya is. <laughs> but like, yeah, exa- no, that but, would be okay. Yeah, ahead. that's what, and that's what I sound that's like. That's what I they do. do. But no, but so many people write to me all the time and, and, and they're telling me, asking me for help and they're like, I'm struggling, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Like, can you help me? And I'm like, fuck, the empath in me is like, you know, imagine if it was you writing for help. You should respond. <laughs> and like, it just sucks the energy out of you because you have to take. Oh God! I I for a while I was taking so much time and responding to so many people and trying to help them and checking on them. People I didn't know, and then my I started to notice like I was getting emotionally exhausted yeah. because you can't do that. You know what I mean? No, you got to You got to live your life at some point. Got to have boundaries. And that's the hard thing. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do my podcast. I'm going to give people advice and I'm going to talk about stuff. And that's the most I can do because I have to protect my own mental health. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not fucking super mental health hero. <laughs> I want to be, but I can't. You can't. You got to live your life. I can't do that. Who has the time? I, I, I literally like my husband, this was like maybe a year ago that I was kind of doing that. My husband was like, you're on your phone. 24 7 what the fuck is happening like what are you doing and i'm like oh, i just gotta make sure this girl in idaho i don't know doesn't kill herself sorry Whoa. honey like i just i'm so well that's i mean yeah that's yeah. obviously an emergency one yeah. that you should yeah i try I just always i'm so in i get too invested i think in other people's emotions because i don't want anyone to ever feel bad which isn't possible people are gonna feel bad look you know? you ever yeah have you ever heard of the law of otherwise no what's that so you shake someone's hand mm-hmm. and you're like, what's up? And they're like, they blow you off. And, like, and a lot of people are like, fuck that guy. What the fuck? <laughs> and we, and then all of a sudden you have this beef with this person. You don't yeah. even know why. Basically the law of otherwise teaches you that you, that, you know, they're probably usually a nice person, you know, otherwise they wouldn't have acted like that. So it's something probably going on with them. If you didn't do anything to elicit that reaction, it's probably something going on with them. Yeah. So you can take the fucking heat off yourself. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Because people take things very personally. I mean, at least most, Big time. most people do. I do. Like, you know, even if you're walking down a street and you smile at somebody and they don't smile back, you know, it's funny because the first reaction in your head is like, what a dick. But then you mm. never think about like maybe that woman just lost her husband or maybe that, you know, like you're saying, the rule of other you know, like they had diarrhea, had yeah. a bad burrito. Yeah. You know, just fought with a fucking You never neighbor. know what someone's going through. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. But it's it's it helps and I just think the pandemic is making us super sensitive. No, I also think it makes us less I make being less obsessive because I just don't it, what's important is what's important. And it's like, come on, this is a lot of bullshit. Yeah. And people think it's going to go back to normal. I don't think it is. No, I don't think it's ever going to go back to normal. Thank you. Yeah, sadly. Thank I mean, you. I hate to say that. And like, oof, I, I mean, it's, I just think it's, this is something that is, and I hate to say this because I, but I've like, this is my feeling. Okay. So it's COVID-19 right now. Are you going to say what I think you're going to say? What, am, what do you think I'm going to say? Another number. Are you going to say COVID-20? Are you going to see COVID-21? Are you going to see COVID-22? Jesus Christ. It's going to keep changing, just like the flu. That's what happens with viruses. I mean, if you look at the history of viruses, they you don't get rid of the flu. You don't get rid of a virus. A virus is, uh, you know, it's, it's ever-changing. It's mm-hmm. not something that all of a sudden you go, okay, we came up with this vaccine, and like, we beat the virus, and, like, the virus has surrendered, and that's it. Like, that's not what happens. A virus, you get a vaccine for a virus, and the virus goes, oh, fuck, and it mutates. It it figures a way around it. It's it's it, it's its own you know thing, and that's what happens. That's the, that's viruses. That's just what they do, and that's like the really sad thing about it. But mm-hmm. I hate to say that, but I don't. I, I you know. Listen, I, mean, I don't think I hope I don't that think I'm you're wrong. wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong. wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But 
in the history of viruses and diseases, like viruses are hard because. But the Spanish flu, we beat that or something. We got back to some type of. I think we evolved Evolved, enough that, you know, um, yeah, they said the Spanish flu was horrible, obviously. I think the Spanish flu now is like the regular, you know what I mean? Like back then we just didn't have the capabilities or like medical capabilities of handling something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I feel like a regular flu now is like the Spanish flu. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just now we're, now we're evolved. We have more medications. We have more ways to deal with it. We have, you know, all kinds of things to combat this back then. They didn't have that. They're like, ah, stick your socks in some honey and shove them up your ass. Like that's like all they had. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have like fucking, they didn't, didn't have like you know uh vix vapor rum <laughs> like they didn't have that yeah they didn't. you know yeah so, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah it's just kind of you know things things change that's just what it is yeah okay we're at 30 so we're gonna take a quick break oh and then we're gonna get back to your worst first okay okay so we're gonna take a quick break with jamie kennedy and we'll be right back on worst first Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Worst First. This episode is brought to you by Green Chef. Now, why should you trust Green Chef? Because if you've ever used HelloFresh, they are affiliated and they are both awesome. So here's what's really great about Green Chef. Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal kit company that makes eating well easy and affordable with different plans to fit every lifestyle. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, or just looking to eat healthier, there's a range of recipes to suit any diet or preference. And they are actually the first ever and only keto meal kit on the market. Sticking to a low carb lifestyle is super easy with them with recipes averaging only 14 net carbs each. Oh my God. Wow. Well, I love my bread, so I'm going to stick to the, the the snackier stuff. But uh, Green Chef also has amazing vegan recipes, vegetarian recipes with lots of plant proteins, rich in omega-3s that boost your immune system. And Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit offsetting 100% of its direct carbon emissions and plastic packaging in every box so you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. Okay, now here's the good part. If you go to greenchef.com slash worst 90 and use the code worst 90, you will get $90 off, including free shipping. Again, greenchef.com slash worst 90. That gets you $90 off, including free shipping. Greenchef.com, worst 90. Use the promo code worst 90, $90 off, free shipping. Oh my God, you can't even, how do you beat that? $90 worth of free food. And I tell, I'm telling you, you'll be addicted. I, order, uh, I order this, I use these meal kits every week and they're super easy and it really takes the, you know, the thought process out of having to go to the grocery store and plan meals, et cetera, et cetera. You can pick it out online. It's super fun to do with your family or your husband or your dog or whoever you live with, maybe just spirits, whoever it's super fun. So again, greenchef.com slash worst 90 and use the promo code worst 90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Enjoy. Do you have kids? No. You don't? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't even commit to the whatever answer the first question. <laughs> Do you don't have dogs? No. You don't have anything? Do you I have, have fish. a gold? You, I knew it. I have a lot. Of, I have koi. Like, you have like koi Tommy like us? Yeah. Oh, shit. Like you and Tommy. I love that. Um, That's and awesome. even And even that like shows you my commitment issues because all you have to do is feed him three times a week. And like the first time I'm I had him. so happy. And like I came back one time and like one died. No. I was gone for like two weeks. Did you not feed him for two weeks? You didn't well, have an automatic feeder? I had an automatic feeder and it broke and the fish guy wasn't there. So <gasps> it just shows you oh. my fathering skills. No. Okay, we're back, you guys, obviously. Um, want to talk about your commitment issues? or? <laughs> just what a, worst by the way, commitment. let's go back to that after we do this. Okay, we will. Okay, Because we have homework. <laughs> Jamie, when is your worst face? Come on, your face butt plug, your face gang gang. I just fucking... And then I am worst day in me. It's like so I, unnatural, I'm trying right? to give you something know, fucking know. good. I'm sorry. It's so unnatural, but people on the podcast like love this like idea of people coming on there and talking about the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you something for me. Okay. So... And I was going to talk about it on my podcast as well. I was like thinking, but I can give you previews of it. Okay. So I'm doing a thing called How I Got Cast on my YouTube channel. 
Mm -hmm. and people are starting to dig it. So this will be a story I tell later, but it'll be a version, much different version of this, but I'll give a person of it. So my worst first uh, would be, um, you know, it might not be relatable to people, but it is because I started with, just like her in Philadelphia, I was a normal kid, and I had dreams of becoming successful, and, you know, things worked out, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. My first, my worst first is my first movie bomb. Oh, no. Yeah. And um, the movie was a uh, sequel to Son of the Mask, uh, to The Mask, I apologize. With Jim Carrey? With Jim Carrey. Okay. And it was- I never was, knew they did a sequel. Exactly. That's why it's one of the reasons right there. She, there she is. That's, I'm sorry. She's on Raya, ladies and gentlemen. There she is. I'm sorry, I had no idea. She, I, a lot of people didn't. And what they, did you play? They shared, but I played the lead role. I played Stop. The, yeah, there it is. Is it out there? It's out there. Can yeah. we see it? Yeah, it came out about 15 years it's ago. It's called The Mask 2? It was, Son of the Mask, yeah. Son of the Mask? Son. Oh, I think I remember hearing about that. Mm, you were 19, I think. <laughs> No, I don't know what you were playing. Anyway, um, that's a big role, though. Oh yeah, to play huge. like Jim Carrey's follow-up. It, exactly, it was huge. Was he in it? Not at all. <laughs> he didn't want anything to do with it, and uh, yeah, and the audience didn't want anything to do with me being in it. Stop. Yeah. So you find the mask. Yeah. After he threw it in the river, right? You yeah. find it. I found it in the backyard. The dog, the dog dug it up. So the dog was in it. Dog was in it. Dog signed on for the sequel. <laughs> Baby was in it. Wife was in it. Wow. A lot of, but so my my worst first was that because it's such, such a long process of what it is. But basically, you know, I had gotten the okay from Jim Carrey. He wasn't going to do the sequel. Uh, the first script was pretty pretty cool uh -huh. and, and you know i had a show called the jamie kennedy experiment yeah and they were gonna let me do my type of comedy where i was gonna go into different characters and it was gonna be different and jim is physical and he does his thing and i go in the characters i do my thing everyone has different little styles and i was like i gotta make it my own and they were like yeah of course and so once i signed on the dotted line of making it my own Zip. That was that was that was gone, and it was. And there's a lot of things that gone into it, but there was production, and you know, a budget, and you know, just a lot of chefs in the kitchen, yeah. and studios, and I was a cog in the wheel. And but the thing is that you work on something for basically a year. Yeah, a year, like from rewriting the script to dance rehearsals to singing rehearsals to prosthetics. I mean, it was a huge undertaking, huge project, the biggest of my life. And I was like, I'm going to just dive in. And I, yeah, we went in, I shot for five months, which is like a epic time in another, in Australia. And it was insane and it was going to come out the 4th of July weekend mm -hmm. in 2004 and it was going to be on buses and buildings and then production got delayed and then they and the long story short and they tested it and it was left and the movie started as one thing mm -hmm. and then it became something else and it just bombed yeah that fucking sucks no it fucking bombed and here's the thing, like though. Like, 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, like, <laughs> 1. Like, 1%. And isn't that the worst? Because, like, in your mind, you were probably like, I'm going to be the next fucking Jim Carrey. This is going to be the hugest thing. It's going to launch my career. Well, I I have, you know, I'm going to talk about it on my channel, but it's basically, I had, there's a lot of stuff that people don't know about the behind the scenes, but, mm -hmm. you know, I had... An offer to do two movies. I had that movie. Mm -hmm. It was like the only time I was starting to get offers. And, and the other one, Titanic. <laughs> I 
Titanic, I was up for. You're like, Irish guy number four. Let <laughs> us give us a goddamn life jacket, will ya? We're draining, good damn it. Let us out of here. We're not fucking animals. I was like, you almost became the next Leonardo DiCaprio. You're like, uh, sinking boat, pass. Pass. Let me follow up to one of the Boring. greatest. Boring. The mask too. The Hell yeah. Greatest icons of all time. Um, Were you ever up for like a huge part that went to somebody else, like a movie that we would know right now? Yeah. What? Lots of stuff. Tell me everything. Um, Not to detract from what we were just talking about, but I know you want to share it on your channel. You don't want to give too much. Well, no, I can tell as much as you want. Uh, What? Well, I'll finish that and then I'll go back to that. Okay. So the movie just bombed. Are you heartbroken? Brittany, we... (laughs) You're hey, like I'm Brittany worse. Furlan, and I like to ask the obvious <laughs> questions. What? Can it was? What? Do you remember? Like, no, you were you were heartbroken. <laughs> you were like, I want to fucking kill myself. Heartbroken. Oh, that's not all. <laughs> it's a lot more than not all. It's. I will go deeper than any <laughs> guest you've ever had. But this your is, parents bought the DVD. <laughs> no, it was. No, it's. I'm so sorry. No, it's. That's horrible. No, it's painful. No. Oh. You asked for the worst first. That's there it is. that is bad. But I mean, fuck God, I know, and I know the work that goes into it. Fuck. No, like a year. I know. I've only done a few indie movies, and like the longest I shot was like two months, and I wanted to die at the end of two months. So five months, I can't even imagine. Like I literally was like exhausted every but day, did, five a.m. to nine p.m. Next day, got to memorize all your lines and be on set the next day. Like it's exhausting. But did anyone write about you in the press after? No. Did they say you 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 you're the biggest piece of shit? Ew. Did they ever say? They said that? Oh, my God. Yeah, tons of stuff. You know what the worst thing is? It's yeah. like, and they say this with comedies, like, you're only as good as your last performance. I fucking hate that. Who says that? That's what I heard. Like, it's like a thing. Like, I, I used to stand up, like, way back in the day. And, like, I remember I would, like, do really great a lot. But then I would eat shit, obviously, sometimes. And, and that would happen. And I would feel so horrible. And... You know, and I remember someone said to me, and I don't remember who it was. He was like, you know, it's the truth. You're only as good as your last performance. Because I would see, like... The- who said that? I don't remember who it was. It was someone it's at the comedy not- store. No, it's not true. I it's mean, true, I swear to God. But like, the thing is, like... No, but it's, no, it's you have true. You have yeah. bad performances, yeah, but it doesn't mean you're not good. It doesn't mean you're not good. That's exactly what it is. And that's the thing that's frustrating, I'm saying, about Hollywood, is that you could do so fucking good a thousand times. Okay, like you're the you're on a fucking roll, and then you eat shit one time in front of people, and they're like, "Oh, our guy fucking sucks." And it's like, what about the thousand times you were fucking amazing? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, we live in a town of um, fucking assholes. Well, I mean, we can break down more than that. We we live in a town of insecurity. Yes, we live in a town of uh, no. Uh, moral backbone. Mm-hmm. We live in a town of imitators, not innovators. Mm-hmm. And we live in a, a lemmings, meaning people just follow. So they don't really, very few people in this town believe in someone from the get and believe in them no matter what. Like, you know, he, he rises and, 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 and falls, mm-hmm. you know, talent always stays. Mm-hmm. And so to say, yeah, it, it it's 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 it, that's some that that's why the town is fucked up. But you can't, you know, that's what it taught me. You cannot go to the town for what you do. Mm-hmm. You have to make your own, yeah. and you have to do your own. And it's painful because they, they are they are very 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 fair weather. They're so fair weather, and it's so annoying. And I fucking hate that because it's like I've seen so many artists who are so good do so great. For so long, and then they have one bad thing, and it's like everywhere. Like, oh, this person ate shit. Oh, like this person sucks, or this was terrible, or this they did a bad movie. It's like, who cares? What about all the good stuff they've done? You know what I mean? Well, economically, I understand. Yeah. But even this movie didn't do terribly economically. But it's like, basically, yeah. There, there are people in this town. If you've ever noticed that the town wants them to win, mm-hmm. and you're like, why is that person keep getting shots? And then there's other people that, that they want them not to win. Yeah. yeah, they're really good. And you're like, why is that person? It's so not weird. Who controls it? that? 
Well, that's a deeper convo. But the good news is it's being disrupted with all these new, you know, mm-hmm. del- mediums. But it is. It's like a snooty kind of like, mm, mm, yeah. Mm. And it's like, that. give me a fucking break. And I would say my biggest career mistake, I mean, I went from worst first to really going worst first, is that I don't, I take it very seriously, but I know it's not serious. Okay. And that comes across, and I think the town misinterpreted that, and that was my fault because I thought they would be smarter than they are. And they thought you didn't care. You're being like, no. Basically, this is the, 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 Hollywood is completely idiotic, and it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's not important. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal. No, you're making movies. Mm-hmm. What, what we're doing. We're fucking play acting. We're playing pretend with cameras. And anyone who says, oh, I'm doing a shot and all this stuff and I have the panaflex and all this stuff. And, oh, it was remarkably. No, you're making fucking playtime. Yeah. So I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. You're making playtime. Mm-hmm. And so to me, it's a joke. Okay. Yeah. It's fun. Making music is playtime. Mm-hmm. Dancing is playtime. Fucking the fucking mass singer, it's playtime. Look what we put singer. out, okay? So Were you when, on the mass singer? No, but what I'm okay. saying is go with all these angles. Right, go with right. the top philosophy, which is what look what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And so it's not that it's it's not fucking brain science. Okay. So they take it this seriously. And it's like, guys, the only understanding that they should take seriously is the economics, because I get it. Mm-hmm. But so there's an elite level to this shit. And it's like if they think you're just so cool with it, I'm too approachable and that fucked me up what do you mean but by that i'm too exactly what i mean i'm, I'm you too, think you're too easy to talk to or two people too, too i accessible? my brand and who i am is everybody's neighbor mm-hmm. like when people see me i always say my level of fame is a hot girl at trader joe's i get a bu- bugged about as much or maybe a little less mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. you know if you were to go to trader joe's well now you've got fame so you probably get more than me. But if mm-hmm. maybe if I didn't, if you didn't have any fame, you and I would get bugged the same before you're famous. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty hot girl. You're a very hot girl. I was going to say pretty hot. I meant pretty <laughs> and hot. But hey, you're pretty hot. <laughs> uh, uh, come on. Right. So yeah, that would get you. Mm-hmm. And so I, um, I, but that's my thing. Like I am your neighbor. But people come up to me and see me like, hey, what's up, Jamie? That's always so weird. They're not. To me. They're not Just weird. Like, they're like, "Hey, man, Jamie, what's up? Hey, Jamie, got your coffee for your Starbucks?" Like, they're very chill with me. That's it's cool, but it's also kind of like, do you ever sometimes think like, "Do I know this person?" And then you're like, "Oh, I don't." They're just. I'm uh, no. I'm used to it. Okay, but it's unless I do know them. But like, they do, like Chick Fil A. Somebody's like, "Hey, Jamie." <laughs> I know, but I'm used to it because. <laughs> Especially Everybody when I shave. Knows you? Well, no, because I'm like their neighbor. <laughs> you go to the ER. What's up, Jamie? What can What's we up? do for you? <laughs> hey, Jamie. How's your spleen? You're not feeling good? What's wrong, Bart? <laughs> What's up with your spleen? Same thing that happened when you were little. What's going on? Yeah. So it's they like. like know your whole history. <laughs> so they, they do that and they, they, that whatever that is, that's my fame. And so what's wrong with that? It's great. Okay. I love it. And that's who I am. Mm-hmm. And it works. Yeah. But Hollywood wants you to really go to the top, top echelon, you all, they almost have to be freaked out by you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Where they're like, oh, where they almost can't say anything because they're so like. Yeah, if you, if you have the right handlers and you do it correctly at the right way and you once you have a hit and then you're blocked off from the world mm-hmm. and you have people making great decisions with you, mm-hmm. then it's good. Yeah. Like, but if not, you have to get your fucking hands dirty yeah. and then you become more approachable. That's a whole other thing. But like Kevin Hart is an example of a, guy who did it correctly where his brand i believe is very approachable very lovable funny guy but now he's become this thing so if you do see him it's like whoa you're seeing like this rare animal because he's such a huge entity now Mm -hmm. but he so it can be built up yeah but did that make sense i totally get it yeah it's so interesting you say that because um to me it's like you're cool yeah you're easy to work with you're cool and they'll go like this Okay, great. Who else we have? <laughs> but I can tell I you of people that are very successful that are like that, that are now successful. But I can tell you also a lot of people that have given up. Yeah. And it's because the town wants the hottest fucking girl at the club and they want to fucking go when the girl at 2 a.m. might be great. And you know yeah. what my friend used to say? He would say, go ugly early, beat the rush. Oh, my God. Too much? Is that too much? 
Good you know what's crazy is I always feel like it boils down to like the law of attraction because it's like we always want what we can't have. So like the more unattainable, like you're saying, the more unattainable you seem, the more appeal you have. Like it's I mean, like- in, yes, yes, uh, and no, because I don't fuck with that anymore. Yeah. You ask me to do your podcast, you say you like me. I'll do your podcast. I like that. That's, That's cool. sweet. Yeah. I, I appreciate your time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't need to go and fucking suck on somebody to fucking please, please. No, I fuck with who fucks with me. Yeah. Same. And I don't, and I don't beg people to do stuff either. Like I've asked so many people to do it and they've said, no, I won't say who they are. They said or, no, not no. Well, actually, yeah. Theo Vaughn straight up said, no, <laughs> don't say that. He's my buddy. I love him too. Why did he say that? I like that? him. He said no. I don't know. What the fuck, Theo? Did he say no? He was just like, I don't have time for that. And I'm like, all right. Well, he's, I appreciate it. He is busy. It's good. He is busy. Okay. Um, he didn't say no. But then there's other buds pretty much. I don't have time for that. It's pretty much no. <laughs> did he say, good, I don't have time for yeah, that? Yeah, he's like, I don't have time for that right now. And I was like, oh, okay. No worries. I mean, I've had great people on. I've had Bill Burr. I've had like amazing people. You know, George Lopez. I've had like huge people on. It's no big deal. I'm not offended. He doesn't know who I am. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. I never ran into him, so it's fine. Um, and, uh, you know, I've asked other people, and then when they say that, I don't keep asking them. You know what I mean? I won't ever do that. So I'm on the same page as you. But then there are some people that, like, love the chase, and they're like, oh, my God, I got to figure out a way. <laughs> I got to figure out a way around this. Like, you know, I got to fucking maneuver somehow, you know? It's like, no. I, I, I'm at that point with where you are, where I'm just kind of like, I'm tired. I don't have time for this. Like, if you don't want to do it, cool. If you do, even cooler. You know what I mean? Never been that way in my life. Yeah. Never been that way with women. Really? I've been that way with job. Never with women. Never. Because I feel like guys are like that. I feel like every guy that I've gone on a date with where I was too, like, open and nice, and it's not even me trying to, like. Oh, they are like that. That's true. Yeah. Why but are, you guys, I ha- why I are guys like I'm that? I'm not like that. Because I would go on dates, like, back in the day, and, like, I would just be so open You're and a nice. a big dater. I did date. Who dates? I did back who in the day. Does I mean, that? I'm married. I know, but who's like? Wow. Meet me at the chicken place. Well, I didn't. I didn't orchestrate who, it. Who goes on a date? I mean, I that was the only way to like meet people. They'd be like, okay, let's. You go. meet them like, at a party, and then you see them. You're like, oh shit, you're funny. Let's do a bump. Figure it out. <gasps> oh my god! But by bump. the way, you're like, hey, I didn't meet anybody at this Hollywood Hills party I at didn't. three a.m. I'm telling you, I, I really don't understand didn't. why I didn't fall in love at three a.m. I didn't. I like, <laughs> like, I think I was just my energy. I don't know what it was. I just, I feel like I'm a very specific person. Well, what, you have to be where you were going. If you're going to Hollywood parties, they're yeah. not looking for relationships. No, those and guys where you suck. dress sexy. Yeah. Okay, but why do they suck? But also because they just like, I mean, here's the thing. You were there at 3 a.m. I know. They think it's going to be fun. Yeah, they're like, let's just fucking hook up and never talk again. And I'm like. Well, you don't have to not talk again. (laughs) I don't know why that is. That never got to me. I never understood that either. That's what would happen a lot. Why? I don't know. It sucked. I was like, this is weird. If you hook up with a girl. And you have a great time. Yeah. Why would you not call her again? I never understood that. I didn't understand that either. And I always thought it was so cool and nice. And then, like, I would never hear from people again. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Wow. Were you, like, were you, <laughs> were you psycho? No, dude, I'm so chill. Were you, like, I mean, like, I'm. Yeah! <laughs> I'm going to take every ounce of your semen. Yeah. Hi, how are you? No. Hi, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you so much. No, I'm- I would never text them because I thought, like, you know, the guy is supposed to be the one that would say you know if i had if they had a nice time i'd be like oh i well, had a nice time like i guess i'll hear from him and then i wouldn't hear from him and i was like hmm. but i also remember like i think it might have been the type of people i was going out with like people who were successful were and it. i think that they were not looking for anything and so they would just be like okay thanks bye you know but it wasn't like just you know regular old fucking. hold on I, I gotta ask you this this yeah. is fascinating to me yeah so you hook up with somebody yeah that is successful right i don't know if you're saying they're famous or not i'm not sure right like kind of like yeah basically okay. yeah all right so listen you don't have to drop names no i'm ne- well, never yeah 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 well you just dropped theo's name she's well, I mean, i'm just saying and i don't have anything <laughs> against him at all i think I he's awesome i wanted to have him on my podcast he was like no theo do her podcast. do my uh, fucking podcast theo just um like. so you go and you hook up with somebody. Yeah. Now, when you're hooking up, is it great? Yeah. I mean, yeah, totally great. And are you friendly? Totally. Are they friendly? Yeah. And then as soon as it's done and Seaman has left his ball area, <laughs> is he like, get out? 
Like, no. do they change? No. Are they still, still sweet and so cool? so nice. Okay. So then where does the weirdness start? So then it's like, okay, like I had a great time. Bye. And like, they're so nice. And okay, like, bye. say bye next day, whatever. So or that night, later that night. You were getting in Uber. You were getting in yeah, a cab. Getting a cab driving. back in the day. And, yeah. and then I'd go home and, you know, we had the fucking flip phones. We had the razors. Yep. And I would sit there and like, wait. And like, no one would ever call him or like ask to hang out again. And But here's another thing is like, I also felt like, and I know this is going to sound really lame, guys. I also felt like I wasn't on their level because I had no success. I was just like another like little Hollywood cute, whatever girl. I was struggling actress working, you know, at a fucking vintage clothing store. Like I didn't have anything to offer. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I wasn't like, wow, let's go out with this girl again who makes $2 an hour. <laughs> She seems great. Like, my personality was great, and I fuck, I would have fun, and I was working, and I was young, and I was trying to, like, build myself, but I wasn't at a place even remotely close to where they were. You know what I mean? And I feel like... But hold on a second. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about having fun and being with somebody, and you're talking about building a life. No, but I also felt like they... Didn't take me serious. So I'm but saying, but hold on, did they? If you did, did you have fun in the sack? Yeah, everything was great. Did they have fun in the yeah. sack? Yeah. So if you're a guy, yeah, and you're a straight man, yeah, and you have fun time, yeah, you're probably gonna call that girl again. I know. I so, thought. so I don't know who you were hanging with. Probably just fucking dicks. But I don't know because it's weird. Or did you even text them and say, "Hey, what's up?" No, I wouldn't say anything. Well, that is that my fault. I mean. Because I don't no like, I don't like to, to, in my mind, I was like, don't text them, let them text you because like, I felt like it was too thirsty. Like I never wanted to be that girl who was annoying and like, Hey, you know what I mean? What's up? I had a great time. Want to hang out again? Like, I feel like that was so thirsty. I feel like if the guy had a great time, he'll let me know. Like, I like to let the guy be the guy, you know, like the, the hunter, you know? I'm yeah. just a little lamb. I'm just a, you I- going to shoot me? No. <laughs> All right. I'll just. <laughs> Stand here forever. Yeah, but so like, if you like the guy at some point, mm-hmm. you could hit him up. But you're right; the guy probably should do that. Exactly. First. So I was like, I'm not gonna be, and I don't chase people. So I was like, all right, well, fuck it, you know. Wait, why don't you chase people if you like them? Because uh, I feel like I've tr- I've tried it like one time, and I was like, mm, this isn't for me because. I, the like, I think it's so obvious if someone doesn't like you, you know what I mean? But then like, if you keep pushing, you're like, and then you kind of convince yourself like, oh, maybe they're just shy or like, maybe like I should keep initiating. And, and then that doesn't feel good as a girl. I don't know no, why. Like, like as a girl, you're kind of like, oh, like if I keep, so I don't know. My experience girls is if you keep reaching out to a guy and they're kind of just giving you like one word answers or like you're asking them to hang out and they say, okay, cool. I'll let you know when. And they don't tell you like that. They're, they're not interested. Right. Say that again. I lost you for a second. <laughs> I went on a break. You just had a stroke. No, I was looking at it. I was thinking, what type of flavor kombucha was that? <laughs> so good. You want one. <laughs> was, was. Um. See, see how boring I am. No, <laughs> He's I like, was, get me was, out of here. No, what kind was, of kombucha? Is no, that? I was thinking this about three annoying. things. I'd look at the kombucha. I was thinking about how you put this glass up and how you're so sweet. And like, it's funny people said no to you because you've gone <laughs> yeah. out of your way to make this podcast so nice. Aww. Um, I don't think people like nice people. But wait, go back to anyway, what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so I was saying, like, if you. I feel like if you reach out to someone and you're like, hey, and I I did this. I did, like, because I was like, one time I was like, well, maybe, like, they think I don't like them. You know, I randomly your thought in your head goes like, well, let's try this. So one time I reached out and was like, hey, I had a great time. Like, when when should we hang again? I'm so, I had such a great time, whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah, me too. I'll let you know when. And then, like, a week goes by and you don't hear anything. And I'm like, hey, you super busy? Damn. Yeah, if if a guy doesn't hit you back, he's either one of two things. He is actually busy. Yeah. Or he's blowing you off. Exactly. And so I did that. And I was just like, the feeling just felt so, like, oh, like, what a loser. Like, I looked in the mirror and it was just like, loser. Like, just, I don't know. It didn't feel good. So I just never did it again, you know? No, I agree with you. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't have to chase. It should be natural. But you shouldn't have to wait and if you like somebody, reach out once. And if they yeah. don't reach back, then that sucks. Yeah. And since you're a woman and since you get inserted and that's enveloping, I know this sounds weird, but it's like you're like, it's like you, it's like a 
thing with when with woman the vagina and the penis are two different things and i believe that the woman is the warm covering yeah. and it's like and it is it's very vulnerable mm-hmm. sex yeah so I, I can imagine that you feel like a little fucking used. it feels horrible i, I will say and and i don't know if i'm alone on this or not but fuck i don't think i am because i will say like fucking letting someone inside your body you're like wow that's like a big thing and i didn't do it very often so for me, it was like when I did do that, I was like, that was a big thing for me. Like, I would only do that if I felt like I really connected with somebody. Like, if we really? had a great conversation. Yeah. I would you weren't, ha- but you weren't just doing that. No, never. Like, I guess like back in the day, like the, it'd be like if I liked somebody, but like wasn't quite sure it'd be like an oral sex thing. But if I really liked somebody and thought we really connected and thought this was, like, maybe going to be something. Because I'm such a, like, hopeless romantic. I'm like, oh, maybe this person's going to, like, save me from my misery, you know? Mm. Or, like, we could totally, like, I, they make me happy and make me feel purpose. Um, Then I would, like, let that person, you know, I'd sleep with them. And then when they reject you, you're like, oh, my God, ugh. ugh you just want to, like, scrape out your insides. Like, can I get a new vagina? Like, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. It feels bad. And for guys, it's like, you're not being entered. You know what I mean? Like, I'm actually like a casino. Like, I'm like, okay, come on in. Yeah. Like, but a casino that's rarely open. Maybe a casino is a bad thing. Maybe, what would I say? I, I'm like a you're like the, uh, exclusive club. And then yeah, you let people in and then they fuck up your club and then you never, they never go. You're you like know? the win. The win. So like the, the, the VIP a casino, room. Yeah, the, the VIP win. room. Yeah, and and it, was, it hurt. It was like, ugh. Yeah, no, I can I can only imagine because yeah. we have different makeups. Yeah. How that is. It's, it's literally bummer. like you Did you ever do that to girls? Did I ever hook up with girls and never talk to them? Fucking Chuck. Yeah. Is that what it's dunk, called? Whatever you want. Fucking Chuck. Pumping. I've never heard fucking that. Fucking Chuck. Pump All and these dump. terms that have been used about me and I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I was the pump and dump. Ram and scram. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that rhymes. <laughs> Um, oh my god hit, i know my husband's done it to like a thousand people hit and quit no um he didn't quit it yeah uh no i no i don't believe i mean i don't believe i'm that person because oh, you're an empath so you'd be like oh i don't want to hurt her feelings no like first of all i don't i i don't believe i hook up with somebody that i don't want to hang out with yeah you that's what, I, mean? what I, I would do like i'm not saying i want to have a relationship yeah but, you know, I got to at least, like, enjoy you at least for 20 minutes. Yeah, You know exactly. what I mean? And it's like, and, and no, I, I have a lot of sisters, so I. Oh, that makes you sensitive to it, yeah. So I just, but I'm the younger of them, so. Oh, so you're extra sensitive to it. Probably, you but. I probably thought you had a vagina forever. <laughs> every Halloween, you know, I was some type of female. <laughs> the cheerleader, I was Betsy Ross. I was transitioning before Stop. anyone. You're non-binary. You announced it on my podcast. In the 70s. But I no, I don't. I'm not. No, I was not. I mean, like, to me, I've always had good relations with women. and That's the women, so good. And I've kind of been raised by women. But, but, you know, I'm not like, was I never like every girl I ever hooked up with I wasn't like, I hope we have a relationship. That's definitely not true. <laughs> I mean, I definitely wanted to have fun, but they were having fun too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, no, I would say common courtesy, text, what's up, want to grab a coffee. That's nice. You know, all that stuff. I probably (laughs) have the opposite of that. Really? I I probably go too far. Really? Where I'm like, you know, hang out, give a coffee and stuff. And it doesn't mean I don't want to. It just Uh means that like, I'm just being a cool person because- I enjoy their company, but it doesn't mean I want to have more than just something casual. Oh, wow. And that may give a mixed message. That might give them mixed messages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are you scared <laughs> to be in a relationship? I'm not. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm a Gemini. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I was raised by a lot of sisters. I'm a strong mother. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my brother and my dad were more of like, we're dudes, but we're also like, you know, like we get emo. <laughs> And the women are like, grow up. You know what I mean? So it was all reversed. That's funny. Um, but I think it's like this. I, I'm going to be very, very blunt with you here. I would like to have my cake and eat it too. So you're shady. That's not shady. <laughs> you I'm wanna- being completely open here. Okay. You know what I love about you? I'm an empath. Judge, judge, judge. How was your movie? Judge, judge, judge. I can't wait to see you at Chipotle. So... 
Theo, Wait, don't do her podcast. No, no. So, I'm just saying because hold it's like. Hold on. Let okay. me get it out. Okay, why okay. It's, Why are you so. Ju- who hurts you? Everyone. <laughs> so, no, here's what it is is that look where we live. Look what we time we're in. We're 20 fucking 20, okay? We're not shady. I have built my life. That's a terrible word. Take that fucking back. I take it back. Okay. That's the wrong definition. It's. Some girl said, you're Peter Pan. You never want to grow up, which is funny. Like, LA is full of that. But basically, but it's different now because I just turned 50. Wow. And thank you. (laughs) And, well, I mean, fucking 50 is the new 23 in LA. My husband's 58 and he's like 25. He he looks 27. Yeah. He's got more fucking energy. He almost hugged me during COVID right now. (laughs) He literally has so much energy. He's so sweet. And so, like, he... He, you know, that's why he's a special person. Like, yeah. you know, there's people that you, they're, they're special. So what am I saying? Act. Ugh. So you want to have your cake and eat it too, but, no, but explain but, but, that. Well, it's simple. It's like I set my life up in a way that I can make my own choices. I hate being told what to do. Okay. I hate having to do shit I don't want to do. Like, I'm not married. I never thought about, oh, what's it like to be married? Like, I can't wait. To, you don't like, ever want to be married? Wa- hold, let me go down that. Uh, let me walk down and figure out, like, who's going to be my groomsman? And <laughs> what cliff am I going to get married on? Like, I don't know. I never thought, like, what, what's the buffet going to be like? Like, no. I never thought about having kids. Like, I can't wait, like, to raise. Like, no. I don't think like that. Like, I don't know what guy is like, I can't wait to get married. Like, I know. I know. I'm this is this is hurtful to you, but I don't know what guys like I can't wait to be settled down and like every day see like the same but I'm doesn't mean you don't love this person. It, listen, you love somebody and you love them. And I've had I probably can been married about six times. Wow. I've probably had six loves in my life. Wow. And I probably would have been divorced six times. And your fault? Brittany, it's not about <laughs> Whose fault it is. It's about life. It's about, you've you never you had a guest ma- like me in your you life. You don't think marriage is natural because you think we're not really supposed no. to be monogamous? Well, first of all, look where we live in the yeah. world right now. It's 2020, mm-hmm. okay? I can come from an airplane, mm-hmm. book my flight, take hit my phone, get the car, check out my luggage through my phone, get on the plane, get, check my luggage on an app, get the car, order my food, Open my gates, turn on my lights, all from my phone. That is a solo existence. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to have like a partner, mm-hmm. you, I believe love and relationships are going to be disrupted like everything else is with technology. And we're going to find out how much is love and how much is codependence. Ooh. Head deep. <laughs> What what I'm saying is, you, I love and I'm I mad can, codependent. Are you? Hell yeah. Well, that's from I love having a buddy. I'm no, like, no. Hey, buddy, you want to go do this stuff? Oh, you don't want to do anything? Fuck, I got to do it by myself. Okay, so let's hold on there. So I love having a girlfriend. A buddy is the best. Yes, and I love having a buddy and all of that stuff. My only issue is, I, I'm getting older, so it's different. I'm not exactly run by my you know, weighing anymore. Like, you know, it's not making every decision, but like, which is nice. Cause you know, but what I'm saying is why is sex? That's the thing. It's, it's the sex thing. Really? Mm-hmm. I could be married tomorrow. And that's not even like I would do that a lot. Maybe not ever. If I really hurt my wife, if I saw her and she's like, it's okay, you could do it. And like, you're like having sex and she's just, like, <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Like I would never do that. I told my my butt. I have one of the greatest examples of this, and then I want to get your opinion. I'm gonna show. Okay. You. I have a great guy. I'm not gonna name his name. He, I I, I want to tell all people this, not just women, because women, some women feel like this, and I I just feel like this because I'm a man. Maybe man more. His wife said, "You know, I really love our relationship, and I love our our love and." I understand if you have to go on the road and if you have to do something, I get it. Because, you know, you're on there sometimes. Wow. Guess what happened? He did it. No. He didn't. He's never cheated. Wow. Ever. And he's But just because he has that freedom. He has the freedom, 
I've seen multiple situations where girls flirt with him and he's never done it. Wow. And then he hit a streak and he's like, I don't even want to break this streak because I'm in such a good streak now. Mm. And he's that guy. And it's like with booze now, I'm in two and a half years and I'm like, I don't even want to drink. I want to see how far I can take it. So I always tell if women just let the guy be. Make his decisions, yeah. He will come back. Yeah. If you try to control him, mm -hmm. peace. It's that That's a really fucking good point. simple. Yeah. It's your, this fucking PTSD of what society has put on you and the insecurity. No, no. I it drives any guy that you like is not going to like that no. because you like fucking go-getters. You love animals. You love to try to tame a wolf. You can't tame that wolf. Yeah. You just got to let that wolf be. Appreciate that wolf for what it is and then see if you can deal with it. Yeah, that's such a good thing to, that's such a good thing to say. Because I honestly, even like being married, you know, my husband does have a really wild past. Um, but he, Keyword is past. Yeah, but he is so loyal. And um, I was in a relationship with a guy who was, he was very. Um, was he normal or no, was he, he in was our like, business? He was in our business. Oh, God. He was like, I like to have. Did my you ever date a guy from <laughs> fucking. I, I did. I dated fucker. a guy who worked at bar Blockbuster. Blockbuster. <laughs> um, nice. Shout out to Shintaro. Okay. He was half Japanese. All right. He was so hot. He looked like Johnny Depp. Anyway, um, so I dated a guy. He was a director, and he was like this, where he was kind of like, I got to have my cake and eat it too, and like, I really love you, and like, we get along really great, but I want to hook up with other people. And so I was just like, well, as long as like we're together, that's cool. And like, I was like, you know, I would love to be there. You know, you can hook up with other people. And so we did like the whole like escorts thing. Oh. Where like you have like, an, cause he liked escorts. So oh. yeah. It, and then it got dark and then it like got mm. not well, that's a whole cool. Other. It's like a whole other thing. Well, that's, but I was trying, was... but I was cool with it. I was like, yeah, like as long as I'm so there. So you were like, just like there? like No, no, no. I was participating. Oh, so okay. it was like, you know, okay. but then, you know, then he had, he didn't like that. He wanted to be able to do it behind my back and like behind closed doors he didn't want me there mm -hmm. so then it just got weird and i was like oh this Whoa, is the worst escorts and pros and that's a whole other that's like a whole other ballgame but anyway you're totally right about it's actually so funny even being married like if i tell my husband to do something he will not do it you can't you know even if i ask him to do something he won't do it usually mm -hmm. but if i give him the choice to do it or not like, if I make it almost like it's his idea, then he does it, which is so interesting. Or if, like, if, or if I don't say anything, or I just give him the freedom, like, you know. How could you tell Tommy Lee mm -hmm. what to do? You can't. There's no one that can tell my husband what to do. Like, literally. My husband, if oh. I literally ever try to tell him what to do, he will look at me like, really? Like, I don't think so. You know? It's, like, really... Yes, and it totally makes sense. And and it, that's the thing. It's like, as I'm getting older, though, yeah. I can feel my priorities shift. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, having the ups and downs in life and in this business, you want your your ride or die. Yeah, you want st some kind of stability. Yeah, you do. Somewhere. And so I'm getting to that place. But, yeah. you know, it, you know, I'm different than what America preaches at, but I'm not that guy. I've not been married and divorced 10 times. Yeah. So I've, I believe I've done it correctly because mm -hmm. I'm not che out there cheating and having affairs. It's like, boom, I've, I, I've kind of almost got out of my system. Yeah, I'm that's great. So that, my know, husband said that too. He was like, I mean, he'd been married a handful of times too, but, yeah, but, but he'd been on the road and, you know, had so many times he's hooked up with people and now he's at the place where he just like wants a buddy, you know, and that's like, I'm the buddy. So it's like really great. It yeah. is. And it's, it's it, it works probably perfectly for both of you. Yeah. I had a a friend, well, not a friend, but somebody I worked with. I'm not going to name names, but she dated a very big rock star. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you like this, but she it was like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like every weekend they would have the guy come in and the chef. Mm -hmm. And he would make his food and he would order a couple massages and they'd sit by the pool and they would read. And um, after two and a half years, she's like, 
No, come on. Where's the drugs? Oh, yeah. That stuff. Those days are done. Where's the yeah. threesomes? Yeah. Like, where's no. like the cutting ourselves? And he's like, no, 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 love. It's not like that Yeah, he's anymore. like very mellow. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, fuck. So she broke up with him. That's us now. She broke up with him. I know. Because I, I just saw Tommy. And it's I'm like that too. I'm different. I'm not him. But yeah. he was sitting in his den. And he was like, you know, checking Google. He, like, literally what you just said. Amazon. I was like, was it Tommy? Because no. we literally <laughs> but, have a chef come cook food. Yeah. With, and we get massages. And we... Yeah, he's so mellow now, and like he's but, sober, and yeah. You know. So I could see you yeah. that, that works for you, but like a girl that wanted that, she wanted that craziness, I, and, and she, I I do actually love that craziness too. But well, then that you have it. to. So that's the thing. It's yeah. like, and I would just say, you know, I got a little passionate there, but it's like I just if you we we. Why do people try to control other people? No, that's the thing. It's so hard. You have to learn not to. Yeah, but it's not going to get you anywhere if you're with. An independent spirit, man or woman. Mm -hmm. This goes to guys too. Try to control women. Like if if people can just live their own life, they're yeah. not gonna take it. I sadly feel like I'm very controllable. Like if someone, if someone is like, I don't know why. I don't. I feel like if someone's like, you should do this, or like, you know, I don't know. In, in relationships, when people like kind of tell me what to do, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I just like. <laughs> That's good though. I mean, that would be like you like, like to be dominant. I'm like obedient. Like I'm just like, you like okay. You like to be dominant. I guess. Is that what that is? I mean, I, I'm like very like. It's 2020. You can't say that anymore. I know, but like it's but a I traditional kinda, like you like a strong dude. And I kind of like just go be, along with yeah. it. I'm like okay, like okay, like I'm like the little. I don't know. It's weird. Like it, I have girlfriends that are the total opposite of me, where they will be like, uh uh, you're not gonna tell me what to do. And how is the relationship? <laughs> I don't have one. So. Or, or they're with a cuck. Or they're with a guy who is... A cuck. What does that mean? You know what a cuck is? I've heard it, but what does it mean? Cuck, well, they say the number one porn recently in Southern California downloaded is cuckled porn. What? You don't know what cucks are? No. Okay. So a cuck is basically a beta male. Okay. And a cuck... Oh, I've dated a couple of those. Okay, so a guy that you could just fucking, thank you, come again, wipe your fucking... Feed him his back. Yeah. He's like, Britney. Yeah, I've dated a couple Not of those. Not like a real motherfucker. Yeah. So, a, cuck, a cuckled porn is basically the girl's like, I'm doing this because you can't do it, Jeffrey. And like, blows like two dudes wow. and goes, It's because you can't fuck me good. And that's what, and he sits there and says, I'm sorry, honey. And he sits there and he's basically emasculated. Wow. That's cuckled porn. I've totally dated guys like that, though. And did you probably weren't attracted to them? I was like at first because I was like, they're so nice. And it was like cool for like a year. And then like I stayed in one of them for like four years. And I was like wanting to kill myself. And I was like, oh boy. Because it was, he was probably not exciting. No, he was just too, and, and I hate to say this. This is going to sound horrible, but he was too weak. Ugh. Weak. That sounds horrible. Why is that I, bad? Because I feel like I'm like. Like, I don't like being the boss. And then when I am the boss, I'm like, oof. That's, like, not attractive to me. Like, I'm the girl. I don't want to be the boss. I know see, that sounds horrible. Because some girls want to be the boss. See she, what she said? This is 2020, and all this oh. shit is getting thing. But what we were raised on or what we feel our natural instincts are, and what I feel natural instincts are, is a dude is a dude. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say anything else. You know what it means. Yeah. A dude's a fucking dude. Yeah. And a woman is a woman. Doesn't mean a woman can't have her own business and super successful and make more than the man and have more brains and all this stuff but the dude's got to basically go to the fucking kitchen with the bat to take on the fucking guy and the chick's got to fucking call the cops and whatever it doesn't mean she can't do that too yeah. but there's like basic things that we still kind of believe in now it's all being turned on his head and if you say that yeah. you're a piece of shit which but, i hope i'm not no you're not but i actually like totally and i just think like, it all depends on what you what works for you you know yeah but a lot of girls there's a lot of these women now that are you can be as strong as fuck strong as fuck but if a man, some of these women, if you have, a, if there's a man that is as strong as them, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. Okay. Because you got two butting heads, and it's like, it has to be a beautiful dichotomy there. Mm -hmm. And with you, like you said, a lot of your friends who are tough are single, mm -hmm. and or they're dating a guy that they fucking 
kick around the fucking house and they're bored as fuck and they're probably going looking for some side. And that's the truth. I know. I that's the fucking that. truth, man. What do you want me to tell you? I know so many girls and I'm not going to name them. Who oh, are, I fucking can already picture the girls in my head. Like yeah. they're, they're like Instagram influencers oh, who have Jesus Christ. Boyfriends. Of all the people you should name, you, you, you're, not, you're saying, naming Hollywood people you shouldn't. Like, you sh- no, then, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm not going to drop this Instagram. I'm not going to say who they are, there. but there's so many girls on Instagram. And this is that is, a title? This is their MO. Though. Is that a title? It's kind of a title. I want to punch my own face. <laughs> Seriously. Imagine being one. I want to punch my own face. No, like if you can make money at it and do all that, I, God bless you. Yeah. But please don't fucking act serious. Please say, I know it's fucking crazy, right? If it's you're an crazy. Instagram influencer, you got to go, can you believe I'm making this money? It's so no, fucking, I fucking blow so my fucking mind stupid. every day. It's so crazy. But if you're like, actually think it's serious, please hit yourself with that. Seashell. <laughs> No, but it's funny because I was going to say is there's like so many girls that I follow that have husbands or boyfriends who are literally they're like slaves. That are bitch. And they're married to them and they're like they're with them because like the guy does everything like takes the photos and edits them and follows them around with a camera to parties and like literally is their bitch. And it's like I could never that's called, do that. That's called a cuck. That's a cuck. Yeah, okay. so do the girls cheat on the guys? I feel like they probably do. I don't know them good enough to know, but I mean, they're not, they're definitely not Side like attracted D. to these guys. They're not attracted. I don't think so because the guy is literally like, okay, where are we going next? Like, are they like, like getting like, side D? Are they getting double D? I'm not friends with them that All much, right. so I don't know, but I, but I've been around them enough at events and things where the guy is just, I literally thought one of them was their assistant. Yeah. And she's like, this is my boyfriend. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, the guy was just like, all right, where do you need your next shot? Oh, okay, let me take your pictures. Okay, stand there. Let me get the right angle. Like, But see, that's okay, and it all works for them. Yeah, it works for them. I mean, it's okay. Like and I'm saying, it's not bad, but it's just kind of like not, not my thing. No, because you're more traditional. Yeah. What, uh, what doesn't mean it's, the, you know, normal or whatever, but we're, what you're used to is a strong dude. Yeah. Like, if I ask my husband to take a picture of me, he's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> doesn't even look. Yeah. He's <laughs> like off the ceiling. Oh, this is great, honey. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I have to post about this outfit. Can you take a picture? He's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's blurry. He's off. <laughs> it's like the plant in the background's in focus. I'm like, oh, this will work great. Thanks. It's great. <laughs> love it. I've learned to use the self-timer. Anyway. I love it. Okay, wait. People need to listen to your podcast. I feel like you have a lot to say about a lot. It's good. Um... It's called Hate to Break It to You. Hate to Break It to You. Make it, sure to download on iTunes. And- it's on iTunes and Spotify, Spotify. And it's on YouTube, too. And YouTube. Hate to Break It to You with Jamie Kennedy. You can hit me at, at Jamie Kennedy Twitter, the Jamie Kennedy on Instagram, Jamie Kennedy Facebook. And at The Mask, too. On- <laughs> That's cut that out. <laughs> I'm an empath. I'm kidding. I know, yeah, but it's painful. I love you. Okay, I'm sorry. Cut that out, Daniel. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you start weeping. It just cuts you at the end of my podcast crying. Like the last podcast I ever did. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love having you here. This was so fun. It was we good. Did like I an get, hour and a half. Did I get too crazy? No, you're fantastic. I'm the crazy one. This was great. Nina Dewina loves you. Nina. Nina. Okay, guys, make sure to stay tuned next week on Worst First. Follow Jamie on all social platforms. We're going to tag him down below. And thanks again for listening to another episode of Worst First.